Hello and welcome. I originally intended this mini lecture video to cover all the different classes or subcategories of connective tissue um, and go through them one by one. However, I decided that on APR there's a really great animation available to you. And so right here is a screenshot of how to get to that animation. If on the module menu, which is right here, okay, on the drop down menu you click on number three, um, tissues. Okay, and then over here, if you click on the um, film or the slide thing for animations, this drop down list appears. And if you click right here on the connective tissue over you, it'll provide you this seven minute animation that walks you through all the different categories of connective tissue where you'll find them, what their functions are, and the different components of them. So I'm going to direct you instead to this animation that I think you'll find really helpful. And so in this mini lecture, instead, I'm just going to go through the pictures that I took in lab to help you identify the various tissues and help point out some of the structures. So you continue on and finish watching this video, or you can stop this video, go to APR, watch this animation, so that you get the organization of how all these different tissues are classified or um, categorized, and then come back and watch this. It's up to you. Either way, I hope that the combination of these two videos will be very helpful for you in learning this often complicated classification system. Let's start off with one of our loose connective tissues. This connective tissue is a realer connective tissue. Okay. It's a loose connective tissue because its fibers often appear singly and not packed in clumps or dense clumps as, as they would in a dense connective tissue. But, so this is considered a loose connective tissue. You also see lots of space in here. So the space is, is your ground substance. So, so it's very, very loosely arranged. You find a realer connective tissue as filler between muscles or for example between your muscle and your skin um, and in a number of other places as well. The components of a realer connective tissue that we see, the first thing I note, are all the, the loosely arranged fibers. So these real thin fibers, for example right here and here, that, that's all your elastin. Okay, those are your elastic fibers. And then you have thicker fibers, and they, they're not quite as dark and obvious. That's your collagen fibers. So, see if I can outline one here. Okay. Um, your irregular connective tissue is also vascular. I'm still outlining some collagen here. Vascular means that there are also blood vessels. So, that's what this might be right here. It might be a blood vessel, I'll write BV for you. Okay, don't worry so much about that. Really, what we want to tune into are the elastin fibers, the collagen fibers. Look at all these resident cells, okay? Uh, what I mean by resident cell is uh, in my last mini lecture video I talked about how the tissues all have um, specific cell types. So what I've circled here are um, fibroblasts, but in a real or connective tissue you also get a number of other cells. You get white blood cells, you get macrophages, you get mast cells, okay? so. There's quite a few different cell types. For right now, I just want you to be able to point out the fibroblasts. Mast cells and macrophages are more irregular shaped. They're larger. Mast cells contain granules, so they might have little specks in them of histamine and heparin. Okay, so at this point in time, I do not expect you to be able to identify those types of cells. The next type of loose connective tissue is adipose. Okay, or fat. And I'm going to show two different pictures of this because we had different slides that, uh, that appeared slightly different. So some of you um, looked at this slide here and some of you looked at maybe another slide. So the, the dead giveaway for this one for adipose I think is that it looks a lot like chicken wire fence to me and I, I know I said that to a number of you. And, and in almost in some cases it was really, really hard for you to focus in on anything. And that's because the majority of a lipid cell is occupied by a big lipid droplet and that lipid droplet is so large that it takes up the entire inside of the cell and often you have the organelles like the nucleus here shoved off to the side totally smushed on the along the membrane okay so this is this is adipose now you see adipose um, in your skin okay deep a, a deep subcutaneous layer of your skin you also see adipose surrounding some of your organs like your kidneys so it's, it, it can be very important for protection 
In some slides that you might see in your textbook or in other sources, the inside of the cell here will stain red. And that just has to do with different staining methods. So in some staining methods, the stain actually ends up dissolving the fat. And so you have these empty like looking cells. But you can imagine that it was once jam-packed with lipid. And if other cells are stained using a particular method, then that stain is red. Okay, It's an, an oil-soluble dye called Sudan Red. And then you can actually see that big lipid droplet. But more or less, it would all look relatively the same. Huge, big globs of fat. Here's another example. When we're zoomed out, this is on 100x. Okay, now you can start to see the real um, chicken wire-like fencing. You also see some vessels in there because it is a vascular tissue. And then here's another slide, but still you see these large empty-like spaces. Okay, That big empty space is one cell that was once filled with a lipid that has now been dissolved, but you can imagine that it's there, and so you can imagine that all these organelles here get squished off to the sides. Before we continue on and look at a slide of a dense connective tissue, there is one more subcategory of loose connective tissue, and that is called reticular co connective tissue, which we did not look at in lab. It is called a reticular connective tissue because of the abundance of reticular fibers, which are now called type 3 collagen. So you might see in some references it called type 3 collagen and in other references called reticular fibers. They're very, very branched fibers. There's a picture of them, I believe, in your textbook. Um, but I just wanted to mention that so that you were aware there was one more classification of loose connective tissue. Okay, so this is a dense, regular connective tissue. And if you remember from lab, regular refers to the arrangement of fibers. So you have a dense, regular connective tissue, and you can have a dense, irregular connective tissue. And so the regular word, again, applies to the direction the fibers are running. And so right here, you can see that all these collagen fibers are running parallel to each other, all in the same direction. This is a very strong tension, uh, tissue and can withstand a lot of tension because all of the, the fibers in this dense regular tissue are running in the same direction. It can withstand a lot of tension in one direction. You also see some fibroblasts okay, interspersed in here as well in between the fibers. You notice also that these, these fibroblasts are very compressed and elongated, and that's because they really are squished between um, these fibers. So they look very thin and elongated because they are so compressed. Here's another slide of a fibrous or dense connective tissue. Um, again, notice how the fibers are all running parallel to each other. Notice how the fibroblasts are really elongated and smushed. Here there's not as many of them as there was in the previous slide. And this is the type of image that can be confusing to differentiate with smooth muscle. But again, in smooth muscle, right, we would see a centrally located nucleus, and we would see this, this spindle-shaped cell, so we'd see some tapers eventually. So keep that in mind, right? This, again, is a dense, regular connective tissue because the collagen fibers are all arranged in the same direction in a parallel fashion and the fibroblasts are elongated and appear to be compressed. In dense irregular connective tissue you will see lots of collagen and clumps of collagen but they're all irregularly arranged because that type of tissue can withstand, withstand pull or tension in many different directions. And you'll find it in areas of the dermis, which is your skin, and in the capsules of, of many different organs. Alas, there is one more classification of your dense connective tissues, and that is a dense, regular, elastic connective tissue. And you just see a lot or a, a huge abundance of elastic fibers in this tissue. Often you'll find them in your larger blood vessels because they need to have an elastic um, ability to return to their original shape. And some of the ligaments in your vertebrae are elastic. We did not look at a slide of elastic connective tissue in lab. We did look at elastic cartilage, so make sure you don't get confused with those two things. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to cartilage. 
And there are three different types of cartilage. There's hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. We looked at two, hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage. If you did not get a chance to look at a slide of elastic cartilage, don't worry. We will look at it next week, and hopefully I will also have some slides of fibrocartilage for you to check out as well. This type of cartilage that we're looking at here is your hyaline cartilage. It is the most common type of cartilage in the body. It's found in your nose. It is found on the surfaces of articulations, so that means where joints come together or where bones come together. Um, so the end of long bones is an example, the sternal ends of the ribs. Okay, So it's the most common and you find it in many different places throughout the body. Hyaline cartilage is glassy in appearance, and that's why it's given the name hyaline, because hyaline means glass. And so some of you, I told, to me it looks like a washed out watercolor. You see lots of um, space back here, lots of matrix or ground substance, okay, kind of washed out. And that actually, it's not nothing, it's not fluid, that's actually where you find collagen fibers. They're just really difficult to see through a light microscope, which is the type of light which is the type of microscope that we use in lab. The resident cells of cartilage are um, chondrocytes, so chondro and sites. And there is not a hyphen there, but I'm separating the words because the cell that actually begins to form the matrix is a chondroblast. So blast. So we usually use the word blast for an immature cell and site for a mature cell. Okay, so initially the cells, the mesenchymal cells that differentiate into chondroblasts, okay, they're immature cells, and it's the chondroblast that starts secreting the matrix. But once those cells become surrounded by matrix, they are called chondrocytes. Okay, so these right in here, these little guys, those are your chondrocytes, and they're surrounded by what we call lacunae. In a, or a lacuna, and that's the space that each chondrocyte um, occupies. So it's kind of this vast space there. So you have a chondrocyte in a lacuna. Okay, and so because the lacuna is is really a cavity, let's see if I can draw this. The line there, okay, or the edge of the cavity, is the capsule. This here is a slide taken from the trachea. So a lot of you may have had a difficult time finding it because there's a lot of other tissues in that sample, right? Because your trachea is composed of cartilaginous rings. And so what we were trying to do is find the ring, which is indeed the cartilage, okay? But it's also surrounded by a number of other tissues. Okay, so if you didn't get to see the slide of elastic cartilage, here's a picture of one. Okay, so this is your elastic cartilage found in your ear and in your epiglottis. Okay, so elastic cartilage, it's very similar in appearance to hyaline cartilage. It has the matrix. However, in addition to the collagen, it, it has a lot of elastin fibers. And so that's what all these dark colors are, almost appearing black or dark purple. Those are elastic fibers. Furthermore, you see that the chondrocytes, there's actually a lot more of them here in the elastic cartilage than there was in the hyaline. And they also appear to be a little bit larger. But you still have a chondrocyte okay, inside a lacunae okay, surrounded by the capsule. The third type of cartilage found in your body is fibrocartilage. Okay? It's the type of cartilage that you find in your intervertebral discs. And hopefully next week we'll be able to look at a slide. But you also will have your chondrocytes and you'll have your lacunae. Um, one good identifying factor of fibrocartilage is that the chondrocytes actually seem to be arranged in more of a pattern, and so you might get clusters of three or four that are all parallel to each other. So they tend to appear more in lines. Okay, so this next classification of connective tissue we're going to talk about is bone. And here we're looking at a slide of compact bone, or on your slide in lab, it was also called ground bone, but it is called compact bone, just labeled ground on the slides. And the other type of bone that, that is in your body is spongy. And your bones have both types, so there's both compact and spongy bone in your bones, but they vary in the degree depending on the bone you're talking about. So for example, your femur might have a lot more compact bone than it does spongy bone, but some of your irregular shaped bones, um, like your pelvis for example, might have more spongy bone. 
So compact bone usually appears in the outside of your long bones, and the functional unit of the bone is called an osteon. Okay, it's these larger circles. So I I like to think of bone or compact bone at least as like the way the back of a logging truck would look with all these trees chopped down with the rings in them. So in the center of your osteon is your central canal or often it's also called your haversion canal. So central or haversion canal. And that's where your blood vessels run and your nerves run. Okay, So it's the source of nutrition for all of your osteocytes. And your osteocytes are these little little spider-like guys. And similar to cartilage, the osteocytes are found in lacunae, so little cavities. And the cavities exist between what we call lamella, okay, or lamellae. And so I'm just going to try to, right here is a lamella. So basically the rings in the bone are your lamella. So the lamella form these kind of concentric rings circulating your haversion or your central canal. And then in between those rings of lamella is where you have your cavities or your lacunae, where you have an osteocyte. And similar to cartilage, right, the bones, uh, the cells, excuse me, that start to build the bone or the matrix of the bone are your osteoblasts. And once they become surrounded by the matrix, they are called the osteocytes. So essentially, these osteocytes become kind of trapped in between these rings of lamella. And however, though, they are connected, luckily, to their nutrition source, okay, the haversion canal, via these little stripes called canaliculi. So these osteocytes, to me, almost look like big spiders with lots of legs, okay, extending through the rings of lamella to the next layer and the next layer on into the central canal. All right, so last but not least is our fluid connective tissue called blood, okay? So on scan power, a lot of you may have said, I don't see anything, and that is because your blood cells are very, very small. So you really had to zoom into your 400x, and even in physiology, when we take samples of our own blood and start doing white blood cell counts, we will put it under our oil immersion. So these cells are very small. You can see that the majority of the cells are your erythrocytes. Your erythrocytes. So from now on, in anatomy, we're going to call them erythrocytes and not red blood cells. Okay, so they are your erythrocytes. Next, we have our cells. Okay, I'm going to change colors here that actually have the nucleus. So your red blood cells do not have nuclei. They're the only cell type in your body that does not have a nucleus. Your white blood cells do, and those are called your leukocytes. So do not confuse leukocytes with lymphocytes. A lymphocyte is a type of leukocyte, but all of your white blood cells are called leukocytes, and from now on we will call them leukocytes. Finally, you see tiny little specks in here. They look like just little granules of stain, but they're not. Those are called your thrombocytes, and your thrombocytes are your platelets. Okay, then you have the matrix is all the fluid okay, in here. All right, so I've now just walked you through okay, connective tissue and all the different subcategories of connective tissue. We've looked at them in lab now. You have watched the animation in APR, or you will, right after this video, and you've seen this video. So hopefully now you've got all your connective tissues down, and we'll see you next week. Have in a follow-up video, I will talk about um, the different types of muscle, cardiac, skeletal, and smooth, and I will talk about nervous tissue. So until next time, have fun and learn your anatomy.